Where in the Bible does it say, pray to Mary? This question is always guaranteed to show up in whatever video I make, oftentimes even if what I'm talking about has nothing to do with Mary. So before I respond with some answers, I'd like to ask my own questions. Where does the Bible say that we should pray the sinner's prayer? Go to church on Sunday, celebrate Christmas or Easter, base our beliefs in a book that wasn't even written yet. Think about that one. Where does the Bible say which books belong in the Old Testament or that we should add the New Testament to the Old Testament? Where does the Bible say we should start denominations or have church buildings? Where does the Bible say we should put crosses up in our churches or abolish polygamy for lay people? I could go on and on, but I think you get the idea. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with these things. Well, most of these things. And I bet most people agree. So let's hear it. Where in the Bible are these things explicitly taught? And don't give me the verses that you twist and manipulate and take out of context. You know, that's what Catholics get accused of all the time. But whatever. I just want to know which rules we're playing by when we're going to have these conversations. But as many people are out there that just want to spew hate, I do believe that there are some who have sincere questions. I was like that at one time. And when I was looking into Catholicism, if I had those questions and no one ever took me seriously or responded in spite of my own snarkiness, I don't know if I would be here. So I want to do my best to answer this question, bearing in mind that it's important to understand the motivation for asking the question. Because if someone is truly seeking to understand, then I believe this answer will truly help. But if someone is just looking to throw hate and disregard the Catholic faith, then let me just spare you the time. This answer will certainly not convince you. And guess what? I'm okay with that because each person has to take responsibility for what they do with the truth. I can only present what I understand it to be. So here it is. Where in the Bible does it say to pray to Mary? All right. Now, before we get into this, we have to talk about the word prayer. For many people, the concepts of prayer and worship are intrinsically linked together. But for Catholics, these words don't necessarily mean the same thing. And I think this is a struggle for a lot of people because for Catholics, prayer can be part of worship, obviously, but that doesn't mean that every kind of prayer is the same as worship. See, for Catholics, prayer can just mean asking for intercession. And this is tough for our Protestant brothers and sisters because they don't have a category for that type of thing. So the first thing that you have to do is clarify what Catholics mean and don't mean when they say prayer, okay? Now, if you can get past that, now we need to make another disclaimer. Catholics do not believe that Mary, the saints, or anyone else other than God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is divine or worthy of worship. I feel like I need to say this because people often respond to a conversation about Mary with this random comment like, well, why do you believe Mary is divine or equal with God? Or who saved you on the cross, Jesus or Mary? Or why do you guys worship Mary? And I think what happens is that people have all of this like pen up misconception and aggression to Catholicism, that when you say anything about it, it just sort of spills out. And one of the challenges with these conversations is keeping people on track with the topic. It can be tough, but I think it's important. Now, I said before, there may not be a specific verse that says pray to Mary. In fact, I'm just gonna say it, there isn't a specific verse that says pray to Mary. Now let's talk about though why this is not a good question to ask. The Virgin Mary was a contemporary of these events in the scripture. So obviously we have an issue here. If what the Catholics mean by prayer is basically asking or talking to the Virgin Mary, then you know what? It's safe to say that the apostles did ask her to pray for them. She spent time with the apostles and even went to live with John in Ephesus. And I'm sure that he asked her to pray for her at times. So there you go. Now, since she was alive during some of the events in the New Testament, it would seem strange if there was already a doctrine and practice of Marian devotion beyond what we can assume took place with the apostles asking her to pray for them and to tell them about Jesus. Remember, somebody had to tell Luke what happened in Luke chapter one. Who do you think that was? So after the apostles died, it took the church some time to unpack her role. Now think about that. The apostle John sees her in Revelation 12 as the queen of heaven. That's at the end of the Bible. So it's not to be expected that the apostles writing before that revelation took place would have already had that in their mind. And this is part of how we understand that our faith and doctrine and understanding of Christianity develops. 
We see the church wrestling with issues in the book of Acts, like what to do with the Gentile believers coming in and how they could respond to what was spoken about in the Old Covenant. And part of why we need the church is to help us unpack these things and bring us clarity. And this is part of the natural process of understanding our faith and not just about things related to Mary, but also to the nature of God as a trinity and the substance of Christ and the divinity of the Holy Spirit and even the canon of the Bible itself, which wasn't even formally defined until the late fourth century. So it makes as much sense to question those ideas by your standards of, well, where does the Bible say dot, dot, dot. If you look at the history of the church, you're gonna see this. But having said all that, I wanna share with you why asking for the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the other saints is indeed biblical. And we'll begin with the Apostle Paul's command for Christians to pray for one another. St. Paul says in 1 Timothy 2, verses one through three, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior. Now, I don't know that I need to do much more to make this case, since I've honestly never heard anyone argue that we shouldn't pray for one another. I mean, people confuse me when they read the next verse where Paul says, there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And then they try to use that to say that we shouldn't ask for intercessory prayer from the saints. But I think the issue isn't so much about asking for prayer, but rather who we can ask for prayer, specifically the saints. Because why? Because people go, oh, well, they're dead. You can't ask them for prayer. So let's look at why we believe it's great to ask for the intercession of the saints and why this isn't worship. So we're gonna ask the following questions. Are the saints aware of us? Oftentimes people say things like, don't pray to dead saints, they can't hear you. But the scriptures lead us to a much different conclusion, my friends. Hebrews 12 tells us that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And this is talking about the saints. So if they surround us, then are they aware? And what does it mean that they are witnesses? Does it mean that they see us? It seems to. Now, some may argue that there still isn't evidence from Scripture that they are aware of us, but Jesus says there is rejoicing in heaven when one sinner repents. So who does the rejoicing? We see that he mentions in one text the angels, but he doesn't say only the angels. Additionally, in Revelation chapters 5, 6, and 8, we see the saints in heaven offering prayers to God. And what are they praying about? Their own needs? No, they are praying for all of us. Now, some will say, well, how can they hear us if they aren't divine? They're not omniscient. They don't know everything. I, you know, here's the deal. I don't have any idea how things work like that in heaven. There are lots of things about heaven I don't understand, but that doesn't make them any less real. Sometimes you just have to say, well, in heaven, things work differently than they do here. I'm okay with that, are you? The other thing that must be mentioned is how Jesus refers to those who have died in this world. He doesn't refer to them as dead, but rather living. In Mark 12, 26, Jesus refers to those who have died and says they will be like angels in heaven. And then he drops a bomb on the people and he says, speaking of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that God is the God of the living and not the dead. Does this sound like Jesus thinks that the saints are dead and unaware of anything? You know, the last thing I wanna mention about this is the fact that at the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus is there speaking with who? Moses and Elijah. So that blows up this whole idea that the saints are unaware, that they're out of it, or that it's a sin to uh, ask for their intercession. So let's pull these ideas together, my friends. For Catholics and Orthodox Christians, by the way, prayer to the saints is not worship, but rather an understanding that they are in the presence of God in a way that is beyond us, but at the same time, they are aware of us as they surround us like a cloud of witnesses, which means they can offer prayers for us they can rejoice in heaven when sinners repent and also petition God for justice when they don't. Now, if this is scandalous for you, no one is saying that if you don't ask for the saints' intercession, you can't be saved or pray to God yourself. And despite what you may think, Catholics pray directly to God all the time. There's this really cool prayer called the Our Father. Catholics love to pray that a lot. You should check it out sometime. Now, I understand that because human beings like to put things in neat little categories, I hear people say things like, well, why would I ask for Mary's intercession when I can just go directly to Jesus? My answer is, I don't know why you would since you don't believe in that. I do believe it, so it makes sense for me. It also made sense for the early Christians as we see this practice in the life of the early church. 
I could give you a bunch of quotes, but I'll just leave a link in the description to an article that has some of these quotes so you can check it out if you wanna see it for yourself. But it's there. And not only to the early Christians, but it should matter to you that the vast majority of all Christians who have ever lived have also believed this, friends. Now, maybe that means nothing to you, but it, it, it should. At the very least, I'm hoping that this video will help those of you who don't understand where this comes from will see its biblical basis and what it means and what it doesn't mean. And if you're a Protestant and you wanna try it, you certainly can. You don't have to be a Catholic or Orthodox. Just give it a try and see what happens, my friends. Thanks so much for watching. God bless all of you. Take care.